<clears throat> right, guys, have fun. <sighs> but it'll say, let us continue this transmission. Did you enjoy your refreshment break? <clears throat> Are you all refreshed? Yeah. All right, then let us continue with your dialogue of questions and answers. Hello, Pasha. And you good day. I'm happy and grateful. Um, to be here and communicate with you. All right. We are also grateful for the co-creation. Thank you. What would you like to discuss? Well, I'm preoccupied for, I don't connect the dots about the concept of all existing simultaneously in the same past, future, and now. Yes. You don't uh, quite understand that concept? I do not. I, I hear you, and I hear you many times. Yes. Um, well, let me put it to you this way. What time is it? No. That's all there is. So that's all there is for anything to exist in. Everything is happening all at once. Everything is created all at once. There is no other time but now. Therefore, everything has to fit in that now. So the only way you can really do that is to allow everything to be a different perspective of now, a different vibration of now. It's all the same place and all the same moment, but just from another point of view. It's holographic. It's like looking at any object, that is the one object that there is. That's all there is. But maybe you're looking at it from this side, then maybe you're looking at it from that side, maybe someone else is looking at it from that side, and from that side, or the top or the bottom. But you're all looking at the same object at the same time, but you have different experiences because you have a different perspective of the object. It's similar to that idea. There is only one thing. Therefore, it has to be shared in some kind of ultimate time-sharing process. And that means that Everything is going on at once, but you don't think so because everyone's perspective is really a different reality. And you don't see the other realities from your perspective. You only see what's reflected back to you at the angle from which you're looking at it. Does this help? It does. It, it does partly, partially. Oh, all, right. all right. So if I take that, which I do entertain that concept of one moment of the now, Yes. Viewing it from all directions, so therefore there's all directions to this one yes. now. So where am, how can I interact this with the fact of incarnations of Well, that's self? what I'm saying. The incarnations all exist now. Reincarnation is just, in a sense, an effect. It's just a side effect of your perspective. You can create the experience as if it's one life after another, but that's just the way you're arranging the perspectives. The fact is all those lives all exist at the same time. You've heard us talk about the film strip analogy? Yes. So that doesn't help clarify it, it for it you? It does not, only from the fact that I am a consciousness. Yes. So at this moment, in this now, I am Yael standing up here. Yes. So I identify myself as such. Yes. But in another, uh, through this uh, strip of uh, s mm, stagnated film, yes. I am also, if you're saying the way you're saying it, that I am, let's say I had a hundred expressions or incarnation. Yes. So what about the 99? Am I, if I am occupying this now... Then the others are saying, occupying a different perspective, a different experience. So... So am I the one who is overseeing all the hundred? That's the oversoul perspective of yourself. But every single one of those others is their own person. And from their point of view, you are one of the other 99. They consider themselves to be the only one, just as you do. Am I having an issue with an identity then? You are an identity. You are a perspective. You are a point of view. That's what your identity is. But every single experience you will ever have will always be seen from that point of view. Even if you create the experience of expanding into different levels, it's always going to be from your point of view, and everyone else is going to have the same kind of experience. Everything they experience, they will always have from their point of view. That's what makes it unique. How am I them, then? You're not. 
as this you. So when do I become them or was That might happen on a different level. Let's say, as we said, the oversoul level, where you know that you are all of those yous simultaneously, or the all that is level that knows itself as everything, everyone, everywhere, every when, simultaneously. So you have to go to a different level to have that perspective. But from this level, you are not experiencing yourself as them. That's what this level is all about. That's where the divisions are. That's where the separation experience is created. So you can pretend you are not them in order to have a singular experience. But you're just, in a sense, pretending not to be everyone else while they're pretending not to be you. Mm -hmm. Is this making any more sense? It does make sense. Um, when is this ending cycle then? I mean, never. Am I becoming... Never ends, never, ever, ever. There is always more. There's always another point of view. There's always another perspective. There's always another level. Even when you reach all that is, all that is can experience itself from another point of view. Yeah, I understand. Never ends because it never began. It just is. It's really, isness yeah. is its quality. Isness, that's it. Everything else is subject to isness. Isness is not subject to anything else. So the idea of time and space, different past, present, future, that's all within isness, within existence. Yeah. But existence is not subject to time and space and all those things. Yeah. Is this helping? It does. Thank you. All it right, does. you're welcome. Um, Yes. And then you mentioned to other people when they ask about themselves, about the theme yes. that they came to express here. Yes. Mm, how can I... Um... The things that are most challenging in your life are usually representative of your themes. What if you beyond the challenges and you just live life? Um, I, I'm not sure what I'm saying, if it's that correct. That can be a theme for some people. I'm just going to have a good time, that's it. Mm. That can be a theme. Now, it's somewhat rare, yeah. but it can be a theme. However, if you were truly done, you'd be gone. Yeah. So if you're still here, you must be doing something. You're exploring something, yeah. even if you're exploring doing nothing. Is it difficult? Uh, perhaps is my personality blocking me from seeing my theme? Well, maybe. I don't know. Let's ask the question. Are you acting on your highest excitement every moment that you possibly can with no insistence on a particular outcome? Yes or no? Yes. All right. <laughs> I love this question because I hear it so many times. Yes. I do. I totally do. And I love my life. Then there you go. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong except uh, uh, perhaps I've been trained to see a focal point to go to. Is, is the way I'm seeing it. I'm just so enjoying life. So let me get life. this straight. Yes. You're having a wonderful life and you're asking for more difficulty? I ask for, for a, 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 I don't know if it's the word purpose would be appropriate, but yes, I want a focal point. Everything have a focal your point. Your purpose is to be yourself as fully as you can. That's your purpose. How you choose to do that is up to you. But that's your purpose. To be the you you are, the unique perspective you are, as fully as you can. And if you feel and believe that you're doing that, you are fulfilling your purpose. Just by being you, as fully as you can. Remember, you don't always know what's going on around you. That is so. So others may be seeing something in you they need to see, even if you don't see that you're giving them something to look at. So in my purpose would be perhaps to help others to see that? Maybe so. But if you're still here, you're serving some purpose in being where you are. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd be done and you would leave. It's a very simple test. Many people say, oh, I think I'm done. Well, if you can lie down and close your eyes and count to 10 and say, I'm done, I'm gone, and then open your eyes again, you're not done. Yeah. Because it is that easy to leave when you're done. Yes. But if you can open your eyes and stand up, then you want to be here. You're not done with something but it may not necessarily be something obvious. So if you feel fulfilled, then go through life being a representative of a fulfilled person because you never know who you're gonna touch and who's going to see you. And maybe just because they see the smile on your face, 
it will brighten their day and make all the difference. You have no idea what kind of impact you may be having on other people just by being. Yes? Very that can be a purpose. Well said. Why, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, align with that. Yes. Um, or oh, perhaps not. So one of the times you, I was listening to a recording of yours that you talk about the blueprint realm. Yes. Where we can change things. Yes. The blueprint level, the template level reality. Yes. So, so how can I manipulate going there? Well, you can become lucid in your dreams and, and then you will be aware that you're dreaming and then when you're aware that you're dreaming, you can in a sense be out of your body and when you're out of your body, you can ask to go to the template level reality and when you go there, you can look at the template of the physical reality that you've created and you can make whatever rearrangements you wish. I like it very much. I just, just don't trust myself that I'll remember to... You don't trust <laughs> yourself? I thought you said you didn't have any of these issues. This is not an issue. This is just no? part of... No? <laughs> not trusting yourself? Well, not trusting that when I'll be there, I'll remember to take it because, you know, again, Why life is so beautiful. not? Why not? If this because is of interest to you... Is it? It is. Then why would you assume that you wouldn't be able to do what you need to do? I don't know if I'm assuming. I'm actually thinking I'm I have experienced it, yes. but the time it's like I feel like I'm a little child. But the time I get so? somewhere, I'm like, Ew! it's all vibrating so beautifully high. Then maybe that's that all I'm you so need happy. to do. And, then, and then maybe that's like, all you need to do. But again, if it is truly representative of your excitement, and you focus your intention on it with excitement, then if it is relevant to your life, it can happen. If it isn't relevant, it won't. So maybe that would be your best clue. Okay. It could happen on the very last day of your life. It could happen tomorrow. Yeah. The point is, it will happen if it needs to happen, when it needs to happen. And if it didn't happen, then it never needed to, and you've lived a happy life anyway, so what do you care? Yeah. Yes? I hear because you, yeah. remember, the point is to allow your life to become a lucid dream. Yes. yes. So if you're living to your fullest and you're in an ecstatic state, then you are living the dream lucidly. And what more could you want anyway? Mm -hmm. What do you need to change that you can't change just by living? Uh, well, you comment today to one of the guys here when he asked about the DNA. Yes. I do want to activate the dormant ones. But you are by living your life to the full. So I heard, yeah. Well, there you go. I have two little items uh, also. One is you answered someone when he asked you, how do you know what you know? And you said, I know what I know when, when I, I need, need to, to know, know it. it. Before that, I don't know what I know. I totally understand it and I agree with it and I'm start applying it into my own life. All but right. where is the source of information? Everywhere, here. Nowhere. Everything is here and now, remember? Yes. The so-called idea of the Akashic Records, yes. it isn't a place somewhere else. Yes. It's just an understanding that every bit of information that exists is right here. And when you operate on a certain frequency level that's representative of that information, then you automatically know it because you're in harmony with yeah. that information. It's all right here. Mm -hmm. So whatever level you're on, that's what you get. That's why we tell you. You can't perceive what you're not the vibration of first. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I Wonderful. Well. Okay, so one more thing is that uh, to the young... Um, to the young? To the young... Um, you mean like yourself? First contact, I am young. Yes. But to the young that I spoke to, uh, the first contact expertise that uh, you Oh, you're talking about the trainee. Trainee, yes. yes. Trainee. Yes, yes, yes. So he doesn't have a name. And we don't have names. I, yeah. Mashar is not my name. But it's just a word that means messenger in one of your languages. He says that he can, I can, he can be identified by his frequency. Yes. We all are identified by our frequency. We recognize the frequency of each other. If you want to call that a name, that's fine, but it's not a name like you people have. So when you, when you want to contact someone, you just focus on, 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 on their that frequency? frequency? Yes. Well, so if he is deciding to 
birth himself here in earth, I thought of a name. Oh, all right. Is it okay to give it to you, to give it to He'll him? He'll take it under advisement. Yes. <laughs> he may not choose it, but right. he's certainly willing to receive the gift of a suggestion. So the name will be um, Ben Mesera. Why that? It's two words in Hebrew, and the first one is the son of. Yes. And the second one is the, the message. Son or of deliverance the message. Of the, yeah. All right. He'll take that under advisement. Wonderful. Thank you so very much. Thank you. He says, I like Benjamin. Hello, Bashar. And you good day. So it seems to me that we all have a lot of power when it comes to creating our reality. Yes, and you I, have ultimate power. Yeah, it seems like I'm getting close to that blueprint reality you were all talking right. about. Do you like the soul contracts and the uh, lessons we have to learn still come in, into play when you enter that reality? Yes, of course, although you can mitigate some of it or accelerate some of it because some of the soul contracts are that very point okay. to learn how to do that. Okay. Yes? So you could theoretically just by like visualizing something knock out like a soul contract or like a lesson or whatever you need to Not do? Not necessarily just by visualizing something, no. It requires action on your part with respect to the idea of your highest excitement because that's the activation energy. Okay. If you just sit around visualizing, you're not really doing anything. Right, right. You're not grounding the energy in an action that shows that you're committed to that energy. It's like completing a circuit, grounding a circuit. You can think about something all day long, but if the wire isn't connected to the rest of the machine, it doesn't start moving. It doesn't do anything. You have to flow the current into the physical reality through your physical actions to show, to demonstrate that you understand how to apply this energy. Okay, that makes sense. I know, that's why I said it. <laughs> and visualization, remember, is just your physical mind's best bet at what the outcome might be. This is why we say when you visualize, by all means, have a visualization that to you is representative of, symbolic of the ideal state. You may think that it needs to be literally as you visualize it, but it almost never will be. Sometimes it might be, but most times it won't be. This is why you just use the visualization to the best you're able to create that visualization, making it as exciting as you can possibly make it, as representative as you can of the ideal scenario, and get excited about it, Use the visualization to amp up that excitement and then utterly drop the picture and remain in the excited state. When you drop the picture, then the higher mind goes, now you've made room for me to give you what is actually representative of that excited state because what to the physical mind may seem to be the absolute pinnacle experience, to the higher mind, that's just the beginning, kid. You understand? The higher mind can imagine far greater things to give you than you can imagine with the physical mind. So why limit the higher mind's ability to give you something more magnificent than you imagine by insisting it's got to look like the physical mind said? That's actually a limitation, even though you may think it's not. Right, right. Make sense? Yeah, it does. All right. So also on that same note, could you like ground the energy of something you're going for and then without having a process, per se? It is very unlikely, it's not impossible, but it's very unlikely at this point in your history that you will have no process at all because that's the reason you're here. The process is the point. Can you accelerate it? Absolutely. You can bring it down to the process that's just absolutely necessary and nothing more. That's why we shared the idea of the threshold of believability test with you so long ago. You can winnow it down and winnow it down and winnow it down by examining your beliefs about why you think it might take this long to do something. And as you let go of the beliefs and the time scale starts to drop because now you really believe it can happen sooner, as soon as it goes down to a certain point where you realize you just can't believe it can happen any sooner, then that's how long it needs to take. 
okay, in okay. your physical reality in order to give you the experience you need to have, the process you need to go through to actually gain the experience, the appreciation, whatever qualities you will actually need to have to have the fullest experience of whatever it is that will manifest from that process. But some process is usually required because, again, that's generally the point of why you chose to have a physical life. If you didn't really feel like you needed process, you would have stayed in spirit where there's no time lag at all. You think of something, it's there. But you wanted to experience the creation, to savor the process of creation, to feel your power that way, and to discover yourself from a new point of view through that process. If you're in a state where you already know everything, then there's no change, no growth, no new perspective. So you create the idea of forgetting who you are to go through a process of remembering who you are from a brand new point of view. And that's how you grow. Remember, the structure of existence never changes. Everything already exists as the structure. The way creation grows is that you keep creating new perspectives of the structure, new experiences of the structure that never changes. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Does this help? It does. Why, thank you. All right, and then I have one more thing. Yeah, yeah. About a week and a half ago, I had an interesting dream yeah. where I was actually contacted by ETs. All right. And they told me if I didn't try to contact them on like a spiritual level, yes. they would contact me on a physical level. Yeah. And now I'm right here standing in front of you. All right. So do you have anything to say about that? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Except pleasant dreams. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Bashar. Thank you. You see, that's another thing about process. When we deliver information to all of you, we also make sure that we impose limitations on ourselves so we will not spoil a process you're in the middle of. Hello, hello, Basha. And to you, good day. It's very exciting to see somebody and talk to another one. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We are always excited as well for these interactions. I just have one question, and that question came to me this morning, yes. back into my memory. Yes. I have seen you a while ago in an interview, Yes. and the interviewer asked you at the end of the interview a question which I can't remember, but I remember your answer, and I don't know the meaning. Yes. And your answer was, and you look to April, and you said, April, you remember, we talked about that. Earth is the God experience. What did that mean? Are you saying God experience? Yes. Yes, well, everything is an experience of God that it's having of itself. But Earth is a school for a particular kind of learning, a particular kind of experience of transforming darkness into light. That's another way that God has of looking at itself, of experiencing itself through these kinds of transformations. Does that make sense? Yes. So it has to do with creation. You talked about creation just before. Creation, yes. So we are creators only on Earth? No, no, no. Remember, all of you are aspects of all that is. It's just that you're pretending that you're not. So that you can experience yourself from different points of view. Mm -hmm. But you are all that is. Right. Simple answer. Yes. Thank you. That's my only question. All right. Thank you. Good day, Bashar. And you good day. I'd like to first thank you and everybody else in this room for this co-creation. Oh, right. Thank you as well. Um, I have a question about uh, connecting to and learning from my multiple incarnations. They're not your multiple incarnations, but we understand what you mean. <laughs> uh, what, are, what, are, um, what are ways to, to do so? Well, what does your imagination tell you? Um, you can do it through meditation, you can do it through artistry, you can do it through 
music, you can do it through a variety of creative expressions. What works for you? Meditate. What do you imagine you would like to do? Meditation is good. <laughs> good or wonderful? Fantastic. It, it, is, it is wonderful. It's great. All right, all right. Just want to make sure you're actually doing something you find exciting. <laughs> um, I, get, I get information. I get downloads. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and I, I'm well, curious. then you're getting what you need, aren't you? Correct, yes. I'm curious if these downloads are um, from spirit guides. Uh, my Who higher, cares? My higher self. Who cares? I don't really care, I guess. Well, then why ask? Uh, curiosity. There's no such thing as idle curiosity. Idle curiosity. It's either important for you to know or it's not. Hmm. So, which is it? That's important. Boy, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it's important, <laughs> sort of, kind of. <laughs> the point we're making is this. Most of the guides, whether it is a spirit guide, an ET, a future self, whatever you want to call it, they're doing their job best when they remain relatively unobtrusive and let you determine what you want to do with the information you've received. Guides guide subtly. Sometimes they teach you how to be your own best guide. They will do the least amount they need to do to allow you to receive what you need to receive. Understandable. So, for example, they will often use what's right in front of your face to deliver a message. If you're walking down the street and there's a conversation going on down the block that you need to hear because it contains information you were curious about, excited to learn, well, the guy doesn't necessarily have to deliver it like a booming voice in your head. The guy just needs to whisper, turn left, because the guy knows you will encounter the conversation and get what you need. So they'll often use synchronicity. Yes? Yes, I understand. And therefore, they're not interrupting the flow of your life by forcing you to have to listen to some bombastic dialogue from them. <laughs> They're just allowing you to know what you need to know just enough to keep moving, to keep growing, to keep flowing. They don't want to interrupt the flow. Now, yes, of course, there are exceptions. Sometimes you'll receive that booming voice. Sometimes it will be very blatant. There are people who've actually literally encountered their guides in physical form, whether they knew they were their guides or not. But those are relatively rare moments, and for very specific reasons that I won't go into right now. Nevertheless, most guides do their work unobtrusively. I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the important point is, apply the information in your life and see what happens. Yes? Correct. And so? I also had a question about um, the actual physics of remote viewing. Yes. Is the actual physics of remote viewing is to know that nothing is really remote. Mm. Remember when I said you go to the frequency that is representative of the information that you seek? That's it. Because everything is here. Every tidbit of information is right here, right now. So when you know it's not remote, you can see whatever you intend to see by shifting your frequency to that which is representative of that information. Well put. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't know that until I told it to you. <laughs> One more question I think will help everybody in the room. Um, maybe, maybe not. You don't need to speak for them. What exactly are hiccups and why do we have them? Depends upon what kind of hiccup you're talking about. Um, a hiccup, uh, involuntary muscle spasm of the diaphragm hiccup. Involuntary muscle spasm of the <laughs> diaphragm hiccup. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. What does it get you to do that you otherwise might not have done? Uh, well, I can actually s stop them now, so. Yes, but what does it get you to do? Uh, it gets me to um, concentrate my energy in a certain spot. In other words, slow down, stay present. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that kind of hiccup, by slowing you down and keeping you present, 
can prevent any other kind of hiccups from happening in your life. <laughs> I like it. But generally speaking, it's calm down. Calm down. Calm down. I feel calm now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good day, Bashar. I knew you good day. Uh, I have two questions. One has... One moment. All right, continue. I have two questions. Uh, the first one has to do with the question of the vortices. Yes. Uh, certain areas, for example, around Sedona are identified kind of, say, Bell Rock, yes, yes, yes. as being kind of a, a, a focal point, is that? But, yes, this is what we were talking about. But... Um, is the, vort is the energy concentrated in just a few points, or it's a broad cone kind it of? It can be both. There are smaller vortices, eddies, currents, within master vortices as well. So some can be very broad, some can be small. Just like you can have the idea of a large whirlpool, but surrounding it can be smaller currents and eddies and whirlpools. But the Bell Rock vortex is the master vortex from our perspective. In this area? Yes. It stretches out for miles and miles and miles and miles. And oh. contains every other vortex in the general area. Oh, okay. Because uh, the way I pictured it one time was um, if you look at uh, the sun coming through the clouds, yes. you see kind of this large uh, cylinder coming down, but you see certain uh, bright spots within the... Yes. Yeah. Well, that can act as an analogy. Okay. So can your planet Jupiter's great red spot. Look at that as a master vortex, but look around its edge. There are smaller vortices swirling around it. But that's the master vortex that drives them all. So the Bell Rock vortex in Sedona is the master vortex that drives all the others in the area. Okay. Now, you also talked about like four corners. That's another vortex. And are these vortices like, you know, like you're saying, uh, miles in diameter, that kind, yes. of, that kind of dimension? Yes. Okay. My other question has to do with, um, in my life, there have been people that I've met, sometimes not even for very long, others that, are, that I've known on all my life, yes. that for... Uh, they seem very special. They're, um, yes. Not necessarily romantic. Uh, I understand. Children, old, old, very old, very young, uh, all sexes. Yes. Uh, what is that? Is is that some sort of con all, energetic connection? Yes. All relationships of any kind are for the purpose of everyone in the relationship reflecting to everyone else in the relationship what they need to know to become more and more of themselves. So you will attract different people that will reflect different things that are dynamically important at that moment for you to be in touch with or vice versa. Okay, because sometimes there's a sense of, well, in, in our, the way we perceive things, yes. of, uh, you know, some uh, simultaneous, you know, like, uh, oh, gee, seems like at one time maybe that was a brother or a sister or a husband well, or wife, yes, that kind again, of thing. You can use those multiple simultaneous incarnational connections to also create those kinds of reflections. So it depends on how you're coloring it as to how you'll perceive it. Because it may need to have a little pinch of this, a little pinch of that, a little dash of this, a little spice of this, in order to actually be representative of the reflective energy you need at that moment. So you'll mix and match and create a recipe. Okay, so then to get back to the thing of our creating our own reality and that yes, everything... Yes, you attract yourselves to each other because at that moment, that's the vibrational recipe that serves both of you best. Now, there is this uh, idea that uh, a fairly small number of, whatever you want to call it, fractals, you know, we, yes. we sort of interact uh, many times or many different incarnations. Well, I already told you everything exists simultaneously. Right. So, uh, but... And remember, that's always changing. 
the connections that you make to other simultaneous incarnations change throughout your lifetime because you don't necessarily always need to maintain a connection to that incarnation when suddenly you need a connection to this one. So it's not stable, it's dynamic. So in that sense, this is why the idea can't really be pinned down. Was I that person? Was I this person? And the idea also that many people might think they were the same person, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. I was Cleopatra. I was Cleopatra. I was Cleopatra too. How can that be? Well, the idea is they're all making a connection to that particular person for their own reasons, but they're interpreting it as a memory. But it's not. It's a present connection to download energy from that person that may help them with their theme in life. So many, many people could be connected to the same energy. Absolutely. So, so the same thing in terms of inspiration, like yes. uh, people who are born and you know three years old, they can play. Yes. Mozart or whatever. Absolutely. So okay. Does this help? Yes. Yes. Was that it? I think so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good day, Bashar. I knew you good day. So I have one of the uh, questions from our online audience. Yes. And that is, what is the difference? It's a two-part question. Uh, what is the difference between density and dimension? All and, right. And then how many of each are there? The idea of dimension is like the country, and density is like the states within it. So you can have third density and fourth density, within the fourth dimension. But when you cross from the fourth density into fifth density, you're also actually crossing into the fifth dimension of non-physical reality. So dimensions can contain many different kinds of density states. How many are there? It can be infinite, although it's finite usually within any given dimension, depending upon what aspect of that dimension you're exploring. So different beings in different realities might actually have a different number of densities in a similar dimension that you're exploring because they need a different number of densities in it. Does that make sense? I believe so, yes. And so while you're going and have experienced the idea of third density and are going into fourth density while exploring fourth dimensional physicality, there may be civilizations that actually have 12 densities within that fourth dimensional reality, or just one. So it just depends upon what you're exploring as to how many densities you've chosen to experience. Okay, and so to go further with that, I know that the first three dimensions are space. Um, and one of time. And then time. four is time. Yes. What is like fifth? Well, it gets a little difficult to describe in your language, but the idea could be expressed as being inside out? Does that translate? Uh, the idea of seeing through things, knowing that they're just projections? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. In other words, it becomes a little bit more timeless, okay. spaceless. It starts to become the idea that everything is a little bit more all here and now, so that you can start to see a multitude of things at once, rather than having them be so distinct or discreetly appearing to be separate. Okay. So would that be similar to like how an atom is 99.9% .9 empty space? And so you would see that, basically? That's not really an analogy. Okay. Well, I mean, I know that's literally how things are. Yes. But, but what is empty space and what is the atom? They can actually be one and the other. Okay. That's the fifth density. Okay. Is knowing that what you're describing as a nucleus, an empty space, and electrons are actually one and the same thing from different perspectives. Okay. And then we are third going into fourth density, is that yes. correct? Higher level physical reality, where again, space and time are becoming a lot more flexible, a lot more malleable. You don't have to rely on it so much. It's more about timing than time. Okay. Yeah, I guess the one thing, like, I, I got dimensions down pretty good, 
but all right what is like yes like for densities like what is third density and what is fourth density yes let's just use the simple analogy of the idea of ice mm -hmm. and you're moving into water we're moving into steam by going into fifth density okay does that help yes all right and that is all for me thank you thank you very much Bashar. Hi, Vashar. And a you good day. Thanks. Um, you are currently my favorite permission slip. Oh, all right. You're not your own favorite permission slip? Nope, it's you. <laughs> all right. Well, you do understand you're talking to your own higher mind right now, yes? Yes. All right. So I guess it is you after all. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> but I'll be happy to play along. We can be permission slips together. As long as things don't get too slippery. <laughs> okay, I'm really excited. So All permission right. slip twins. Um, yeah, sometimes it, I find that it feels lonely knowing that we're all one and I'm just like, everyone's me. I'm like, okay. It's not that everyone is you. You're in a sense oversimplifying. There are others. It's just that you have to create your version of them out of your own consciousness in order to perceive them. So everyone you perceive may be a reflection that you're creating, but you're creating a reflection of a true other perspective who is every bit as real as you are. But they're all made out of your energy in terms of what it is you're actually perceiving. Yeah, that's exciting because then I get to reflect yes. certain belief systems and bounce that off of them Yes. and have fun. Yes. Cool. Um, Remember... Even though all that is, is all that is, all that is, isn't alone. Because all that is, is the very essence of self-reflection. And in order to know the self, there must always be an other. Without an other, there is no I. So all that is, is never alone. It can experience the concept of loneliness, through some of you and other beings, but it knows on the highest level it can never actually be alone because if it were really alone, it wouldn't even know that it existed because there would be nothing else to reflect back to it that it is alone. Okay, so that's the paradox. There you go. Thanks, Bashar. Does this help? Yes. Well, thank you. Woohoo.